All right, I figured I'd make a how-to video of sort of an East Coast perspective of how to get out west for elk hunting. This is sort of caters to someone like myself who's going to fly out out west for doing like a week-long archery elk hunt, or a lot of things I'm going to talk about would probably be applicable to a rifle hunt as well. It's four straight days of rain here in Maryland. Frankly, I'm bored, so here goes. Um, first off, in, in terms of disclosures, I'm not sponsored by any of these products. Um, not looking to be sponsored. I just like to hunt and a lot of people help me with their videos on YouTube so I figured you know I should at least try to pay it forward and share with you some of my experiences. Now I, I've only been going out west now for two years so there's certainly people out there who've forgotten more about elk hunting than, than I know. Um, that being said I, I do have some experiences that I think are worthwhile to certain segments of the population. Frankly those guys who are going out west for the first and second time, um, guys like myself who fly out west who don't have the time um, to drive out. So last year I did an archery elk hunt in Idaho by myself. Uh, I was successful, had an incredible hunt, um, made some great friends that were uh, camped out near me. The second year in a row I'd been out there so I knew some of those folks previously but uh, for the most part I was by myself and I, I think some of the biggest challenges people like me have is sort of the logistics. Uh, how do I get the gear out there? How can I go about doing that if I'm not driving out? Me personally, I, I don't have the time to drive out there, let alone, you know, driving 50 hours across country by myself would be uh, pretty boring for me. You know, I like to see the U.S., but uh, not that much. So I, I, I'm someone who flies out. That being said, so let, let me tell you what's worked for me and what I've done, and uh, you can sort of take what you can from this video and, you know, apply it to your own situation. Uh, first off, I, I don't, this is probably the one thing I, I brag about. I have not paid, paid for an airline flight in the last three to four years. And people scratch their head and say, how can you do that? And the main way I do that is through credit card points. So this is one way you may be able to sort of justify some of the cost of the hunt to your spouse. You know, save up those airline points, uh, credit card uh, points, you know, apply to airline programs, great, great way to get out there. So I pretty much fly for the spending I put on my credit cards every year, which is great. So, you know, that's one cost that I'm not incurring. Uh, another issue and sort of, you know, full disclosure, I have a friend who lives in Idaho on the ground. So I think the bigger logistic issue that you're going to encounter if you're an, uh, someone who's flying out west like myself is what to do should you get an elk down. I'm fortunate enough, my, my buddy lives in Idaho, he likes elk, he has a large freezer, he's happy to take whatever he can get. So this is one of the bigger struggles I've come up with. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, lived in Colorado, so I, I had an option for there, too. So that's something that, if you're flying out there, you're going to have to figure out that challenge. You know, I, whether you have connections or, or what have you, um, that can be one of the biggest hurdles of, you know, what to do with an elk should you be successful. So, with that being said, I'll tell you what I did with the rest of the things, and you can sort of figure out some of those logistical challenges. Uh, the other things, you know, are costs. This is sort of, this video is tailored to someone like myself who's not looking to spend you know, $5,000 on a ranch hunt. Um, I think I did everything last year for under $1,500. Uh, the biggest cost of my hunt was I, I was fortunate to shoot the herd bull and it cost me more in shipping him back here in terms of taxidermy than it did, did my hunt. I think it ended up costing me probably double what my hunt was, but uh, I think that's a good uh, problem to have. So nonetheless, um, some of the things to keep in mind, and I'll, I'll sort of walk you through uh, my experience. So in terms of baggage, the first big thing is the bow case. Obviously, you're going to take a bow or a rifle out there. Um, a lot of times, you're going to incur oversized fees for these. Uh, this one's greater than 62 linear inches. I usually fly with Southwest, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so that, that's something to think about. Um, now, what I do with the bow case, you want to maximize, you know, especially going solo or even with a partner, you want to maximize the amount of stuff you can take and not get charged for. So if I'm going to get charged for an oversized case, I pack, I don't have it shown here, but I pack most of my clothing inside my bow case. Take out the foam padding, use that to put your clothing in, um, you know, any extra things like a bow sling, obviously your arrows and broadheads, um, and so forth, and you probably want to put a lock on it dealing with the airline. This is a real cheap Plano bow case, and it served my purpose fine last year. So that's uh, one thing to think about. Um, I, I got a list here so I don't forget. Again, you, you know, you want to sort of maximize what you can carry out there. So you usually kill two birds in one stone with your bow case. Carry a lot of your clothing inside your bow case. Use that as sort of padding for your bow. And I think that will be particularly helpful sort of as, as my first tip. Uh, rental cars. As, as rental cars go, that, that's another cost you're going to have to incur. Um, if you have a partner, you can split the cost of the rental car. It makes it, you know, a little bit more economically feasible. 
nonetheless, you should at least get like a SUV. Most of the places I go, the roads are pretty rough. Uh, one of the biggest concerns I had last year after a couple days of snow and rain, the road I had scouted all, you know, summer on Goodworth here in the confines of my house in Maryland on the computer looked great. When I got out to Idaho, um, it was just a muddy mess after a couple days of rain, so that could have been, been a challenge. So that's one thing to think about too. Um, the other things in terms of cost of the hunt, you basically got a couple things. So you got your airline fare, which I've already told you, fortunately for myself, I'm able to use points. You have food. I don't always even consider food a cost because you have to eat even if you're staying here at your house. Um, this, so that's one big thing. And then the rental car, you got your tags, and then you got your other incidentals, things you might need, especially if you're an East Coast hunter like myself, that you don't really have for out west, like a pack train, and I'll get into some options there too. Now, again, there's probably another 50 videos on YouTube that tell you how to do this. Um, this is more catered to someone who's looking for a frugal means to get out west on their first or second elk hunt, and sort of some, I'll tell you about some of the gear that I, that I use in that regard. Yeah, this is the pack I use. I, I got this on Amazon last year. I got it for $115. Um, prices change quite a bit on Amazon. If you go to uh, camelcamelcamel.com, you can actually uh, cut and paste the uh, website and, on Amazon of the item you're looking at, and you can track the price trends over you know a period of time. Uh, I was tracking this item last summer. I found it for about $115, and uh, sorry, my GoPro is not uh, filming here. There we go. So I found it for about $115. It's a great uh, beginner pack. Again, there's you know, four or five other different brands of packs out there that, you know, you can spend upwards of five, six hundred dollars on. This one's about 115 bucks, but it served my purpose as well. So as I was saying earlier, you, you sort of have, you know, two major, you know, costs in sort of terms of, you know, luggage and flying out there. My boat case being one, carrying, you know, all my equipment. This was the second item. Uh, this item is not oversized. And this item, again, is sort of, as I see it, uh, sort of kill two birds with one stone, a force multiplier. It is both a meat hauler and a uh, day pack if you want to use it for such. I, I thought it was a little large for a day pack, so I, I chose to, to bring this other uh, Cabela's pack that I'll show you, but um, it worked great for taking items out there. I stuck my um, sleeping bag in here, stuck my toiletries, stuck my uh, rest of my clothing, uh, extra pair of boots, some camp shoes. And was able to check this and you know I had it full it was under 50 pounds and I was able to bring a lot of material out there with this item so I was really happy with it uh, I didn't actually use it for packing meat um, I, I shot a million dollar elk and what I mean by that he was 100 yards from an ATV trail so I had some uh, fortunately had some help getting it out which made it easy so that being said I trained last summer with a 55 pound dumbbell on this and probably another 10 pounds of clothing uh, just to break it in, make sure it fit right, and it worked fine. I was just hiking some trails here in Maryland. Now, granted, they're not as steep as Idaho, but nonetheless, I think this thing held up pretty well. Some people complain that it's not as quiet with these little uh, rings on here, but it didn't really seem to make a whole lot of rattling noise for me, and I, I think this would be a fine choice if you're going to uh, baby in or have a spike camp somewhere. I planned on doing that, but as it, as it turned out, I ended up uh, hunting from my uh, campsite and from the truck most days. Um, I still got my Southwest Airline uh, ticket tag on here. Um, other things, uh, this has some plenty of pockets. Uh, I, I clipped my gun to it. Um, the area I was hunting in didn't have brown bear or grizzly. they black bear or wolves. Mount lying around is general security. That's another factor. Those of you flying with a gun, just look up your TSA guidelines before you do that. It's the first time I had ever fl flown with a gun. I was a little uh, hesitant to do it. But as it turned out, it, it worked really well. You know, I had a lockable gun case where I had the keys, and you can look up the TSA guidelines on that, and it was really, really straightforward. Uh, another cheap thing I got for this uh, on Amazon, uh, I think this was just a couple bucks, this is a backpack rain cover. Really good to have. Last year I got a lot more snow and precipitation than I intended, and this thing could be a lifesaver because if you stick all your gear in the pack frame and it rains, you're going to have wet gear, and everyone knows that's not fun. In terms of sleeping stuff, so what I use is the Cabela's Orion tent. Uh, I think this is around six pounds, and uh, I bought it new last year, and it, it worked out great. It, like I said, there was a lot of snow, and it was a bit colder last September than I anticipated, but uh, this tent did, did well. It's an Orion 3. Again, I was by myself, so it had plenty of room to store me, sleeping bag, and a gear, uh, and my pack frames at night, so that worked out well. Uh, another product in, you know, that I recommend, obviously, is to get a, uh, some type of inflatable sleeping pad. This is the Climate Static 
five. It was amazing. It's let's see here. It's not just the it's 18 ounces. So again, thinking about weight in your pack frame, this is nice. You can roll it out, inflates, deflates easily, and it was very comfortable. I slept well despite how cold it was last year. Um, I just had a mummy bag that I used. Um, oops, knock everything down here. This is a mummy bag I used. Uh, not the warmest bag, so I definitely uh, last year could have probably used a warmer bag. This is a, a bag to 20 degrees. I slept in um, some of my hunting uh, clothing, like a hooded sweatshirt at night, and some of my uh, wool undergarments to, to stay warm. Only thing I didn't like about this, and this is just personal preference, is this is a mummy bag. I like having more room for my feet. Um, after hiking those mountains, I was finding Charlie horses and it, myself a bit uncomfortable at times. So uh, one other thing that I found really helpful was this is a little survival radio, uh, Running Snell is a brand. I got this off Amazon, I think it was like 30 bucks. And it's a multi-purpose radio. It's got a little solar, solar charger on it and uh, antenna, I can pick up AM, FM. But importantly, it has a nice little flashlight on it that is capable of running off multiple sources. It can run off a battery and it can run off a hand crank, which is nice. So if you're out there and the batteries die, you're able to get yourself a little bit of light. I hung this in my tent every night. It was great. Just click on it. Being by myself, it was nice. I could just, you know, put on a AM radio and I think I could pick up some of the local football games. It's just something to listen to. Again, it's got a little solar charger so it can run off battery power, solar, and uh, manual hand crank, which is good. You can charge your phone off this. This has a little uh, converter here for being able to power your phone too. So in an emergency situation, this is great to have and just good for a company. So it's only in a couple extra ounces. Definitely, definitely worth it. Now, switching gears, aside from what I was camping with, my uh, daily gear here, sorry, I knocked everything in the floor. Um, in terms of things that I found quite useful and I highly recommend, and you'll hear this from a bunch of others, is trekking poles. I got these from Walmart, uh, nice aluminum trekking poles. They seem high quality enough. I was in some pretty rough country and they lasted me, and I'm pretty hard on things, so these were great, uh, nice and you know, lightweight, I kept them with me every day. At first I was like, ah, maybe I don't need those, but after side hilling it, um, these things really come in handy. So I highly recommend uh, those, especially of us on the, on the flat ground out here back east that might not be used to hilling in the west. Those are coming quite handy. So what did my day pack consist of? I had this uh, Cabela's Elite Scout pack that I used, found it on sale. And what did I have in some of the pockets? Most importantly, first aid kit. So no, no matter you know who you are, Bring your first aid kit. I had a basic first aid kit I, I grabbed off Amazon. Blister relief, have some old skin. That can be a showstopper. You go out there on a hunt, you get a blister on your foot, that's something you know you can wait all year for and your hunt can be over just like that. So definitely don't forget the mole skin. And I had some quick clot as well. Something that in terms of first aid, you know, some it's easy to slice a hand on a broad head or something like that. You want to have that around. Now, in terms of a real important item here, this is something that I found last year compared to my previous year's hunt that really was a force multiplier and saving me weight in my day pack. And what it is basically is a life straw and a Nalgene bottle. And if you're hunting in a unit that has an easy or lots of water sources, like a particular unit I was in, this is really great to have because instead of carrying around a couple liters of water, you can go down to the stream, unscrew it, fill up, half a liter of water and the life straw will filter your microbes for you. Now, being wise, obviously, I had backup water purification tablets just in case, and I, I also did keep a, a pint or two uh, of just a plastic water bottle with me, and you know, it doesn't hurt to fill up your bladder, but nonetheless, this thing is really nice. Instead of you know carrying two liters around, I could just stop at a stream, fill it up, get a drink, and carry it with me. And it's supposed to filter out all microbes, so I didn't have any problem with it, um, trusting in the technology there. And that, that's really something I recommend. Um, other things I just picked up, and, and I saw this sort of, you know, I, I stole this from other people on YouTube. Just grabbed uh, these little bags, um, I, I think here at Walmart or whatever. And they're good to help separate your gear out. So, you know, red for me was uh, my kill kit. I, I've emptied it out here now, but this was nice. I had, you know, kept my knives in there. I used the Avalon Prana as well as a... As a thick bladed skinning knife that I had and had everything in there, had my tags, had my gutting gloves, had a couple extra pair of gutting gloves, had pillowcases that I use as game bags, another sort of money saving tip there. 
Uh, blue, this is my water purification bag, had uh, you know additional backup to this bottle in case it broke or the, the life straw cracked or something like that. Obviously you want to have the backup in that case because that would be a showstopper. And then uh, yellow was my uh, food bag. I just would take with food and a little bit of backup into the field I needed that day. I use either Mountain House or uh, MREs that uh, most people use, so that also helps keep down on the weight. You know, I could take this bag out into the field, and I, and I weighed this bag when I got back with my uh, pistol. I had a 40 caliber uh, Steyr strapped to my hip. It was weighing, even with the pistol, it was weighing about 20, 25 pounds uh, per day, which is nice. I, I didn't find it uncomfortable. Um, one, one feature of this Cabela's Elite Scout Pack that I like, and a lot of packs have it, is this mesh uh, frame here that keeps it off your back. Especially those of you out hunting in September, it can get pretty hot out there. A bag on your back is going to leave you sweaty. Um, this was a really nice feature of this bag that I really like. Oh, well, there's the quick clot. So get yourself some uh, quick clot, a little trauma pack. Good to have in case you need it. It's one of those things you don't want to ever need it, but if uh, you do, you want to make sure you have it with you. Uh, and this was a nice little pack. I could carry my phone in it um, and my GPS. Now, while I had the GPS, for the most part, what I was able to do is download uh, from the National Park Service something called the Venza Maps, and I could turn uh, the antenna off on my phone, but the GPS, the satellite GPS, would still work. So I used that to navigate around the unit I was in. I had spent an inordinate amount of time on Google Earth looking, so I was already pretty familiar with it. But nonetheless, that was a nice feature, and I had the GPS tracking one for backup. I had the Avalon Peranta in here, which is a sort of a nice, lightweight knife as well. And I, I think, I'll check my list here, but I think for the most part that, that's got it covered, the kill kit. Oh, last thing, and that's actually pointing to the camera. So I used uh, a GoPro to film my hunt last year, and you can check my YouTube channel to see that hunt. And I, I must say, and it's it probably bad, I, I did not like the GoPro. I, I thought it was absolutely terrible. I used the GoPro Hero 5, and it didn't work in the cold. Uh, I, I put a very expensive Sony SD card in there, and it kept saying a card read error. Just today, when I'm trying to make this video, I've had a number of problems with it. So, it's a good maybe self-filming video. Just to, you know, I take it with the kids and film stuff on the water in the summer. It's waterproof, but once you start getting into cold weather, it just it, it fails. So this year, I might switch to the Tacticam. I'm still not sure which system I'm going to use to film the hunt because I, I enjoy filming it and recording it and just sort of saving and capturing the memories that way. So, something to think about. Um, I've written the folks at GoPro, don't really hear back from them. I, I think it's a known issue with the camera. Um, it looks like it just cut out there. So that being said, I, I think I've uh, covered everything. Uh, leave comments on, on the video. Please let me know. Again.